All right, everybody, we're making a really neat little tutorial. It's quick and it's easy. We're going to free somebody when they get shot. Just like <laughs> we're frozen, stuck in place. Ah, we're going to get killed. Anyways, so let's learn how to make this. All right, we are inside of UEFN. This is kind of hot on the tails of the last tutorial I did. If you haven't seen it, where you put an acorn in this uh, really cool switch button, sort of gimmick device, you get a really cool weapon. So that's a good one. But we have a couple things going on inside of here right now. We've got a guard because otherwise I'd have to bring in another player and that's kind of a pain. But we really just want to show how to get damaged. Guards can do that really quite easily. And other than that, there's really nothing happening in here other than we need to connect up to the spawner, which we do through our game manager. If you haven't seen the game manager video, it is linked below. Check it out. How to make game managers. Very, very important. You definitely should be doing it. And so the one thing that I have in here that we need is the player spawner. So I've got one spawn pad right here, and I just need to connect that up through what's going to be an editable. So the rest is all done with verse. So let's check that out. Now my game manager sits inside of my creative devices inside of the project. I'm just going to double click this and that will open up Visual Basic where we will start editing code. OK, so let's take a look through this code. It's not that hard, to be honest, to put somebody in stasis. So we're freezing them and we have a few options when we do freeze them, by the way. So we're going to cover that as well. Take a look in here. We've got our editable player spawner. So that means that we can access that player spawners events through verse, through code. Very, very handy. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to listen for the spawned event and call on player spawn. On player spawn gets an agent. We get the fort character. And this is very, very important because we can't access the damaged event without getting the fort character. So the fort character is a failable function. So we do it with square brackets and we wrap it in an if. If this is the case, colon, then we say, hey, Fortnite character, when you get damaged, you uh, you let us know and it's in the on player damaged function, which is right here. All right. So on player damaged gives a damage result as an argument, meaning that we can access something in here. Now, this has been pretty confusing for a while. and A lot of people weren't really sure. I ask around all the time, I've sort of sorted it out. But I thought, you know, I'm going to share this now that I figured it out. You guys get to know as well. So what we want to do is we want to find the instigator character. And that is the fort character, which comes from the target of the damage result. Does that make any sense? So I put D as the variable name or the receiving argument name. Damage result is the argument type. And then we're going to make a variable name instigating character. We're instantiating it and creating it equal to something here. So the four characters we want to find if the D dot target. So inside of the damage result, there's target, there's source. And we're going to see if that is a Ford character. If it's a Ford character, because remember, we're in an if statement right here and we've got a colon at the end. If it's a Ford character and the instigator character, which is this, get the agent is a player. So we want to know if it's a Ford character and a player. Then we're going to make our stasis arguments, which means that we're going to tell Fortnite what to do with the player whether they can do certain things. We're just setting up sort of a set of arguments to be passed in. And so we're going to allow emotes is false, allow falling is false, and allow turning false. So essentially, this person is going to be straight out frozen, obviously. And then we instigate her character. We, we go and get that for character, and we call put in stasis and pass in S, which is the name of my stasis arguments. You're done. That's it. That's all you have to do when you want to freeze somebody. So this was a request on Epic's forum because there's a game out there that allows you to freeze characters and then kill them, which I think is totally unfair. I think this can be used in a much more, um, yeah, creative way. But uh, that's how you would freeze a character. Very simple, all with verse. It essentially is just four lines. So that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.